Baby, welcome to the world famous Stuttering John podcast. We are in subscription mode, so if you ha- if you can't chat, go and hit that big red subscribe tab, and then you'll be able to chat. And uh, you know, you can build up my subscription so I have more power in YouTube by hitting subscription. It is for free, zero dollars, but then you increase my subscription numbers, which increases me, increases my power in YouTube, gives me the YouTube mojo, if you will. Let me say hi, do a little roll call to those in the chat room. We got a good show today with Tony Michaels and Gabe Lopez, along with the resident genius, Hal Sparks. On the eve of the Jan 6 insurrection hearings, this should be a lot of fun, shouldn't it, my friends? If you want to donate to the show, there, there's the link, paypal.me slash John Melendez, Inc. That's paypal.me slash John Melendez, Inc. You don't even need that that slash at the end. I just didn't hit that off there. I thought I did, though. Let me see that. Hold on. 
There it is. That's that's your link. Joni Heisenberg, Amy Phony Barrett. Oh, yeah, that's the new name. I just came up with it. Amy Phony Barrett lived in the household of Kevin Ranagon, the founder of, of the religious group People of Praise during her time in law school. She served as a leader, at, in a leadership capacity as a handmaid. This is just unbelievable. Joni, third time's a charm. Kyle Rittenhouse now claims he is going to Boleyn College. A spokesperson for the college said Rittenhouse submitted his application but is not enrolled for an upcoming term. This guy is a tool and a half. I fucking hate this kid. Joni Heisenberg, people of praise, hired a law firm two years ago to, to conduct an independent investigation into numerous sexual abuse claims. The investigation has since concluded but its findings won't be released. Executive decision. Uh, who are John's guests going to be? Hal Sparks is going to be on. What do you mean? You don't like the Army Major? He's going to be on my special beer on the balcony. I'm doing a special one today after the regular show because last Saturday's I just made private. It, it, half of it was me and Richard trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to get his pictures up. And if you don't think I work hard on this show, it took me an hour. An arduous pr process of taking all his texts, transferring them to his, to my Mac, then emailing them to myself so I'll be able to pull them up. They're great pictures, but it was a lot of work. Yes, yeah, so the squeegee, he is going to be on. You know, people said that you're in a lot of the anti-John chat rooms on Reddit to squeegee. I don't know what your purpose is there. Johnny Heisenberg, the deflection to Alec Baldwin after the Revered, passionate speech by Texas gun owner Matthew McConaughey speaks volumes. Desperation from the deplorables. I even saw, and I'll talk to Tony Michaels about this, uh, a Breitbart article. Matthew McConaughey speaks out against gun violence, but yet is seen with a gun in 41 movies. Who the fuck cares? That's called acting. That's called a roll. What the? F Fuck Breitbart. I said it. Joni Heisenberg doubling down, referencing Breaking Bad. Kathy Griffin tweeted, so I guess turns out I'm the danger. Kathy, just shut up for a little while. I love you, baby, but just stop drawing attention to yourself. You're in no position to be drawn attention to. Joni Heisenberg, court orders Trump lawyer John Eastman, who advised Trump on how to overturn the 2020 election to turn over 159 documents to the Jan 6 committee by 5 p.m. today. We're going to be talking to Tony Michaels about all of that stage dog. He's doing a special show, so everybody got to tune into Tony Michaels tomorrow. Uh, Admiral Sulu, congratulations, John. You've driven that troll car off the airwaves. Next one to go, Kevin. Yeah, we're gonna talk. I'm talking to Tony about Kevin. I look forward to a little. <laughs> Kevin is, I love Kevin. I mean, not, not Kevin. I love Tony. I love talking to Tony about Kevin. Joni, President Biden won't be on Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight. Hopefully next year. Facebook people, join this broadcast. You can support my page by sending stars, a digital gift that helps me earn money. John from Las Vegas is here. Cat, Joni Heisenberg, Ted Cruz, a bar of soap covered in pubes. Courtesy of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Nice, Stephen. Adrian Brower, my moderator. Nice talking to you yesterday, uh, Andrea. I'm glad we um, I'm glad we uh, fixed that misunderstanding. Andrea McCready from Facebook. I have all the love to you. Marco V193 only was to clean up this mess we call Congress and term lips, exposing dark money donations. I agree. Lacey Carter, Forrest Ritchie. <sighs> Bless me. Emergency remedial truth. Matt Knight, Chelsea Leonard, Trina Minor, uh, Mark P with the badge, Mark Curley from Ireland. Today feels like Christmas Eve. It does. Uh, Colbert's going primetime during insurrection hearings. Wow. Tony's got a lot of competition. Benny Loco is here, my moderator. Um, uh, and once again, hit the subscribe. Just go out of the room and go back in the room, and they're good to go. And then you're good to go. Wes Webb, John Deff. See, that's why I'm afraid my mom's not going to be able to figure it out. Susan Mashardi, I kept trying to tell her, Mom, Mom, oh, she's here. But she's here from Facebook. <laughs> she she couldn't figure I guess she figured it out. I don't know. All right. Mexicali, Maggie, it jumped, zippy. But anyway, I don't want to keep Tony waiting here. 
So let me bring Tony on. Tony, how are you, buddy? Good. How are you, sir? Is Gabe coming on? Uh, yeah, I think he's going to come. I think he's going to come. He's he's finishing his sandwich. We're trying to eat lunch in between uh, all the work we're doing for the um, the January 6th select hearings. We're doing a lot of work over there. So, Yeah. Uh, sorry to squeegee. If you're not on that, then you're not on that. That's what somebody told me. Uh, so, Tony, tell everybody what you're going to be doing during the Gen 6 hearing. Yes. So, you know, we have our show every single weekday for two hours um, at noon Eastern, 11 Central on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And we simulcast from Midas Touch Facebook page because we are partners with Midas Touch. So, um, Midas, we've been talking about streaming the uh, the hearings live for, uh, for our show. And Midas Touch actually approached us and said, hey, we'd like for you to host and produce uh, their uh, hearing. So, we're actually going to be broadcasting. I'm hosting the 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 live coverage, the live stream of the January 6th Select Committee on uh, all the hearings, but specifically tomorrow is the, the first one. Um, and we're going to actually be airing an hour before on Midas Touch YouTube channel. So everyone go. Oh, so you're going to be on their channel. Though. That's right. You can go over to the Midas Touch. The Midas is that Touch. good for you or bad for you? Well, I'm, I mean, uh, d- there's going to be a lot of coverage um, as far as, and there's going to be a lot of people watching. So, I mean, you know, it is promoting us uh, as well because we're producing. But I just want to make sure we get as many eyes on this on this as we possibly can. We're going to have a lot of guests, uh, a lot of the Midas Touch personalities. So, I'm sure the Mizellus brothers will make appearances tomorrow night. At some point, we're going to have uh, Politics Girl, Lee McGowan, I think it's coming on. At some point, um, we have... We, we possibly have some other personalities that like the legal AF, you know, Michael Popak, um, yeah. Michael Popak uh, and He's my attorney, Tony. I, know, I know, I know this, I know this, the internet knows this. So um, no, it, it's, <laughs> I think you've had Michael on the show just a few times. I actually think, you know what, come to think of it, I think Michael is, Popak is the one who connected me and you. Is that I right? Think was, I think yeah, that, I think yes, that is. Was. I think uh, Michael Popak connected us. So we have we have Popak to blame for me to be on your show, I guess. I yes, know. because because I was asking him to come on. He says, I'm busy today, but, you, you know, you should, you should have Tony Michaels on. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he texted me and said, hey, get get in touch with John. He 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 uh, he liked to have you on as a guest. So so uh, thank you to Popak. But Popak will be uh, doing some coverage. He'll be giving his analysis. So will his co-host during Wednesday. Karen Agnipolo, which she's been on our show. She actually helped us with the commentary during the Marjorie Taylor Green hearing. Uh, we streamed that and she was giving us um, commentary on that. So, and then we're, we're supposed to have some other people. We don't have the schedule all worked out um, exactly, but we have some other people uh, after the show. And then if there's going to be a break, we're going to have some guests on standby to talk about that as well. So uh, there's going to be a lot of guests and then we're going to do all the hearings, but tomorrow is a special hearing because it is the first one, but also they're going to do a 90 minute presentation is what we understand. Um, so they're going to tell the story. And it seems like today the news is, is that Ivanka and Jared, some of their testimony is actually going to be inside of that 90 minute presentation. Now, how much of it we'll get to hear and see, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Um, hang on. Well, one thing is certain, Tony. Yeah, go ahead. Is Ivanka, Definitely kept t- telling her father to call it off, and he did not listen. Instead, he tweeted out more insightful shit. So Ivanka's uh, testimony is going to be very uh, awful for uh, for her father. Well, I mean, especially if she told the truth, um, which, you know, I mean, could be questionable whether she told the truth or not. I imagine she did because it seems like her and Jared are ready to walk away from MAGA and Trump world anyways, um, just because the <laughs> the brand is no longer a brand that they want to be associated with. Now, it doesn't matter at this point because there seems to be several investigations opening up, not just around the election, but also around some of the money and some of the business dealings that they had while they were official members of the government the two billion jared was paid yeah well i mean i mean this is this is all projection you know they they, these these fucking fox news trader cable tv types talking about hunter biden and all this shit you know it's all projection because that's that's where they're getting this stuff yeah is is the um nice hat by the way no i figured i'd make some merch for tomorrow oh okay (laughs) my my hats i don't have my hats on but they're up here Mm-hmm. You know, so. Well, you know what's so funny about that is that 
you know, I had Ron Filipkowski on, and mm -hmm. he said that Rolling Stone magazine already said that the the right wing talking points leading up up to this is going to be inflation, gas prices, and Hunter Biden. If that has anything oh. to do with January six, yeah. but and of course, well, immediately, <laughs> Lauren Bozo Burt, all all week, inflation, gas price. I go, hey Bozo, yeah. We already know you were going to do this because you're trying to distract us from the truth that you tried to freaking, in, you know, overthrow our government. Well, I think I there's mean, more that she's trying to distract from than that. There's a group out there called Fire Bobert, the same mm -hmm. people who uh, absolutely destroyed Madison Cawthorn and his chances of winning his primary. Oh. Um, they're they're going after her hard. And uh, the story is today that there was a referral made to the state of Colorado, um, about twenty thousand dollars in tax liens for her restaurant um and there's investigations as fraud not just mm -hmm. about her paying her having back taxes and twenty thousand dollar liens against her business which is what's it called um fuck stick and rifle car a fuck stick restaurant oh it's it called uh shooters oh shooters yeah grill shooters. I, in I rifle know. colorado i don't know uh, i wouldn't but puke is, outside but, that but fucking restaurant here's the thing you may not puke but you'll definitely have fucking well, diarrhea I, apparently if everyone yeah. remembers her yep. pork sliders went right on through everyone it's, else. Isn't and gave that diarrhea. enough? Isn't that enough not to elect that motherfucker? If she gave you. I mean, diarrhea? you would think like I want a restaurant. There should be some sort of competency level in terms of the food preparation, <laughs> and so I make you all sliders, and then you shit yourselves. Yep. Well, it could be because they're fucking getting their genitalia out and touching their genitalia and showing mm. young children at bowling alleys and then prepping the food. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if any of this is connected. She got cited by the. Um... You know, you know, by the health organization, our restaurant. Of course, right. she, she's yeah, been yeah. cited by a lot of folks, especially about health. She there was also, a, yeah, she also ahead. lost the trademark on her uh, on her logo. Oh, nice. Uh, I think it was sometime last year, and then somebody bought uh, the rights to it. So oh, nice. she now has a restaurant that she doesn't own the rights for the actual the trademark for the logo. Yeah. Well, who is going to reopen that restaurant? I, I mean, you know, <laughs> look at what you know. Kenneth has a good point, uh, Tony and Gabe. Mm -hmm. If Mike Pence was a true patriot and Christian, he would spell out the truth about Trump's insurrection. I, I agree. He's a fucking coward, man. Well, I mean, that's not su a surprise that Mike yeah. Pence is a fucking coward. I mean, he can't even be in a room with another fucking woman. I mean, yeah. you know, he's got to have mother. And then, of course, right. he's got to have his actual mother right. there to oversee his his <laughs> right. wife, whose mother. What happens? It happens because, you know, him being in a room with another woman isn't about trusting the woman. He can't trust himself to be in another room because, right. you know, that he might co commit an insurrection or an erection. He doesn't know. He yeah. doesn't know which it is. But it, look, Mike Pence, the fact is. Is that as as much of a scumbag as Mike Pence is? Mike Pence wants to run in 2024, so he has come out and said some inflammatory things about Donald Trump. Actually, Gabe got fact checked um, when Mike some Mike Pence news happened because yeah. Gabe found a and statement not the from first time. That was the that was the second time yeah. I had been fact checked by Reuters, but the first time I was fact checked by Daniel Dale. Yeah, well, who yeah. If for anyone who doesn't know, Daniel Dale is the guy who's made his career essentially with CNN fact checking Donald Trump. And he fact checked Gabe on a statement that may or may not have come out of Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? how do you get wait? I don't understand this, guys. Explain to me. How do you get fact checked by like like is it something that you say on your podcast? No. So I was getting fact checked because I was releasing these uh, these Trump press releases. That they would... may or may not be actual releases. Yeah. Right? And maybe, maybe I'm Trump's ghostwriter. Someone, I don't know. Someone may have made them up, but <laughs> they went viral. And because it sounded like fucking Trump. Yeah. I mean, it you know, sounded like Trump. It looked like, like if some you if, yeah, thing. it looks like what he would do. If you read it, you'll be like, OK, that's that, that can't actually be Trump. But again, we live in a world where you're like, I don't know what the fuck is real anymore. Right. And, and what is a joke and what's not a joke? And so later that night, I get a message from someone that was like, oh, Daniel Dale's got your number. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, here, look at the tweet. And on the tweet, it's a screenshot of my tweet sharing this Trump statement with a big fat X that he drew through it. <laughs> and he was like, this is not real. This is not from Trump. Oh, man. <laughs> well, but everyone was believing it. So right. and some people were really upset that uh, that that they got tricked. Um, yeah. So that's why they fact check it. That's I don't know. Again, it. it was the second time that I've tricked people. I haven't gone for the hat trick yet. Look, you, uh, C. Bu, uh, just giving you some love from Twitch. I effing love these guys. Thank you. Thank they you. Cracked yeah. me up. 
we, and, we, uh, we love we love john's audience we, yeah. we like your audience i you know i i even like your trolls they they really they oh, tweet they're at me all the time they were tweeting well, every day morning. every day they the have Lord a tweet to us fuck. and i just want to send the gift that's like why are you so obsessed with me right right they are yeah. fucking absolutely I know. Obsessed with us i know you know what i went into your show and i saw a troll of mine this guy kinky something or another and i just kept saying because he was like emailing me, harassing me. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, dude, you know, you know, stop emailing me this harass. And Tony, you didn't see any of that as it was I, going on. Yeah, so you're talking about in the live chat for my show. Yeah, <laughs> I, I sometimes I'm on such a tangent or a rant. And and sometimes Gabe is actually watching the chat. I'm trying to surf to find yeah, out yeah. what the hell the next subject is. My eyes are be. darting all over the screen right, during the right. show. I'm like, if it, if it looks what? like I'm looking around, it's because I've got two screens here and I'm <laughs> trying to find what the hell we're going to do next. And, because we do two hours a day. So sometimes like, Literally minutes before we go on, like uh, like this morning, uh, there was a story. The story dropped, and the Steve Steve, Steve Scalise clip. Mm-hmm. I watched it right before, so like I had this whole idea of what I was going to do for the first 15, 20 minutes, and ended up being thirty minutes. Gabe had to sit and wait for me to finish my shit yeah, because yeah. I had to fit in all the. <laughs> I was like, news. I'll just, I'll just write a sketch over here, right, while I'm yapping. So, so no, look, this is like, you know. I, I get a message from uh, uh, Nancy Cox, who I love. Stop trashing Kinky. You know, see, here's the thing, Tony. This is the thing that irritates me. This guy goes on my Patreon, starts to write me books, novels about, about like, all this crap and minutia. So I, like an idiot, because Hal would never do this, I engage with him. Then he starts trashing me. So I block him. Then he starts emailing me, trashing me. And harassing me. So I have to block his email. And then I get people here going. Like, you know, I have a moderator of mine going, well, you shouldn't be saying anything. So in other words, I got to freaking just take it. I'll you know, tell you I, what. Kinky Streets is in our chat all the yeah. time. And Kinky Street, you are will, you are welcome to try to pile up emails on me. And I'll just, I'll yeah. let them pile up. I'll let them pile up. Don't 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 listen to John here. Don't listen to John. <laughs> Did he yeah. get your email from the Craigslist ad? <laughs> oh my god the craigslist ad no the i think craigslist. he got it from patreon and he wait, just kept on emailing wait, me wait wait uh. wait 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 his name is kinky streets right this sounds I like a this know. sounds like a porno producer kinky yeah. streets and he's he's in he's in he's in uh, uh john's email box from the craigslist ad this is all coming together here i'm I mean, sure that i'm sure the trolls out there all, i never mentioned everything. his full name so i don't know if this is the person that Oh. I'm talking about it. It might uh, not be it. It might not be the same person. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just okay. saying. I'm just saying everything's coming full circle here, John. Yeah. I'm sure the the <laughs> stuttering John conspiracy theorist will ha- somehow come up with some way to create some kind of narrative around yeah. um, the the porn star Kinky Streets and the Craigslist ad and me and Gabe being on the show. I'm sure there'll be more <laughs> mm-hmm. about it on Twitter look, here in look, a couple hours. Look, whoever this person is, I actually know who he is, but oh. Okay. Love him. You love them all you want, but I don't have to. That's all. No, you don't have to. And 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 again, Kinky, you're you're welcome to come love us or hate us. I don't. You're a fucking whore, Tony. I I am. (laughs) Tony's like, give me the views. Give me the views. I I love the algorithm. You don't care what it is. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You know, even your friend, what's his name over there? Why do we podcast? I love when he does videos on me. (laughs) Well, Tony, I love when he does videos on me. Tony, speaking of which, you got. Have you shown Gabe the uh, isotopes, the uh, band thing? That- uh, I don't know if I sent it to him or not. Apparently, did you know that that uh, uh, Kevin had had? Uh, does he have or had a band? I'm sure he had. Yeah, I don't one. know. <laughs> but sure he had one. Gabe, but- he's got these awful music videos. So I asked Tony if he wanted. They're still to- on YouTube. Yeah, oh, so I yeah, asked they Tony. are, baby. Yeah, oh. so well, they're not going to be anymore. He's probably going to take them down now that we're fucking because so he's watching. Tony- he's watching right now. I hope you downloaded them. Yeah, if. If if you and Tony would come on my beer in the balcony and we'll just have a good laugh, just like yeah, you, sure, I'll just like right. you guys had the good laugh on my DC trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Laugh at his guy. I mean, let's I'm, have the I look, same I'm laugh. always willing to give uh, you know aspiring musicians <laughs> a second look. <laughs> but Tony, Tony and I talked, and Tony was like, Tony was like, John, these are the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> well, the one that I watched, 
the one that I watched because you sent the uh, YG. Well, I think you sent one to me, and then I found another one, and it was uh, it's his band, whatever it's called, uh, Shitotopes or whatever the hell it's called. Um, <laughs> isotopes. Oh, Isotopes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Sorry, sorry, Kevin. I didn't mean to offend you. He he's here watching right now. He <laughs> watches live, especially when we're on. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be okay. some breaking news right. tweet that comes World out right exclusive. after. Um, <laughs> yeah. We've been exposed. <laughs> well, they were talking about my Nugs Not Drugs sign earlier. Right. About oh, it. really? How'd that upset him? Oh, because I'm I'm apparently apparently the videos that I did four years ago, um, <laughs> because I like fast food and it shows. I don't know why this is, should be surprising. <laughs> But I like fast food. Um, they 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 think I'm a fast food reviewer, which I mean, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. You know, I do I do political I, and on, fast food commentary it's here. It's folks. on the internet, so it's right. truth, man. It's 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 real. It's real. But but anyways, I the my favorite Kevin. If you're listening, which I know you are, my favorite <laughs> video of you of your band, and I'm being serious here, and we'll talk about this more on the bitter in the balcony. If you want to steal it from John's, yeah, band, yeah, yeah, know, <laughs> and make and, and make content out of that, you have to because you can't come up with this shit on this your own. Now, Carl. maybe it, it, this is this is actually uh, more evidence of this. Is the, the band John? They did a really good job of the Mario theme song, the Mario <laughs> Brothers. It was wait. Oh that's that's what that's, they played. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. It was He's hot. Kidding, it was hot. They're like kidding. they're like a video game rock band. It is okay. Fucking okay. Good shit. It's some real yeah. battle of the bands type. And of they think quality. they're Devo because they have these green glasses and they all dress in green ties. They think they're like Devo or something. You know, it's like it's 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 embarrassing. Fucking embarrassing. fantastic! <laughs> it's fantastic, John. It's some of the some of the best do they, do they worst dance? music do I've ever seen in my life. Are they just like what are they? Are they drums, guitar, bass, everything, style, and they're serious. Triangle, about it. like what they, are they, they playing? Actually they have some. They have some videos like in their basement, but they do. They they oh, did play their mom's basement. Well, I mean, you know. It is what it is. But they right? actually think that, that somebody will take them serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do, John. All all the stuttering John haters take them very serious <laughs> about yeah. everything that they say about you and how they Red create Zeppelin. content only Guys, with you. Their stuff is hilarious, okay? Right. They it's have all funny. sorts of people who show up, give it's them hugs, funny. they said. Right. Right. Yeah. And and they and they can't believe that someone would say that they're not funny. It is a, absurd. Yeah. That someone would say they're not funny. I don't know. But Tony, I love when you, I love talking the other day and you were just like, and you were just like, John, these are freaking too funny. I oh, go, they're hilarious. <laughs> well, now, now I'm excited. I, I feel like I should make a bowl of popcorn and like sit back and just. I'm actually, enjoy. I'm actually, I'm actually wondering now that you, that we're talking about it. I don't know if if your videos from DC are more goofable than these videos. <laughs> but it's really fucking close, man. Well, like <laughs> it's really fucking close. Like, but Tony, the only the only difference is I goofed on my DC things. I mean, right? Yeah, you know, I go. He thinks this is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's well, the difference. Well, you know, he he does he does need. He does need your content to develop content. And that I guess it pisses him off when I say that. Gabe, Gabe, you sent me the last the, the episode that they had. I didn't watch it. But yeah, yeah. Um, apparently apparently he is really upset that um, <laughs> that I say that he would not exist without you. And he, he I guess he claims that he loves you and he loves your show. He yeah. loves your show. He loves He's like, to watch. Oh, he he loves said, my show. That's yeah, he, he was like, he John says. should make content every single day from when he wakes up to when he goes right. to bed. Because that way, Carl would have a way to make content because Who's he has Carl? no other way. I, I, I thought yeah, Kevin, like Kevin, Carl. Yeah, I don't Kevin, know. I think Carl, they're brothers. Clam, they're twin whatever. brothers. I don't know. Maybe it's the isotope thing where he's. Isodope. 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 It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. How many guys are in this band? I I, I I forgot. Is there like four or five guys in this band? Do uh, they have a tambourine player? No, it's, it's turd hailing. Mm. Uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really bad. Gabe, it's really bad. But they, they actually thought they would catch on. Like they actually have outfits all picked out. So they have their mm. green. And, yeah. 
That's some heavy commitment to be like, we're going to go for the outfirts first before we know that we've even got a hit and people like us. Well, I mean, the Mario Mario theme song is a fucking hit. Yeah. And here's the thing. I'm sure that YouTube is like, nope, copyright. That's ours. It's a fucking hit. But that's that's the funny thing because like uh, someone tweeted to me this and they were like, you know, he steals all his content from your show. And then he steals all his music, <laughs> his musical content. Is from this surprising? Is it, now it's, I'm now here, so, here. I'll tell you, I'm well, on I Kevin's mean, okay. side here. I'm on Kevin's side here about the music. They're, they're not they're not horrible at playing the music. It's just horrible fucking music that they're playing. <laughs> like like they do a good job at playing really shitty music. I mean, right, right. What I'm saying. It oh, sounds. I mean, it really sounds like he, uh, Kevin is like a cover content creator, right? It's not original <laughs> yeah. work. It's someone else's work that he's covering. And maybe, you know, it's like Vanilla Ice describing Ice Ice Baby. He's like, there's a slight difference in the song. It's like, he's like, see, it's totally original. It's totally different. <laughs> why? I mean, I mean, you know, there seems to be a pattern here with this guy that has this uh, Why Do I podcast. It seems like a pattern with him where he mm-hmm. has to have yeah. someone else do something to where he can make content that he thinks is funny and good. He thinks. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tony, you hit the nail in the head, which, which I, I didn't expect. That, like, just like, you know. That you said, John, without you, he, this guy doesn't have a show. <laughs> well, I mean, he doesn't. I mean, he, he could he could go goof on someone else, right? Yeah, he could. But goof his on entire us right, but his entire audience, and they try they try to goof on us, but it's not the same because his entire audience are stuttering John haters, right? <laughs> like that's there and there. That's and that's what he has to play to. Be, now that he's pinned himself into this reddit stream thread where yep. he has to appease these couple hundred people who absolutely hate your guts right <laughs> and the other thing too that 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 kevin may or may not understand i think he actually understands this is that stuttering john and even uh, howard stern um interns uh, howard stern show all that stuff it's all really searchable on youtube like yeah. Artie's really searchable on YouTube. Like you're yeah. really searchable on YouTube. So he understands like, oh, to some degree, even if people love or hate John, he has some level of relevance because people are typing right. it into fucking YouTube. You dumb motherfucker. Like John has relevance because they're searching for him. You dumbass. That's why. Hey, all you Carl watchers and, and you know, to, all, joking aside to all you Carl watchers out there who think he's some kind of fucking intelligent person by goofing on John. It's not hard to goof on John. It really isn't. But here's the thing. John is relevant. Fuck off. <laughs> John is relevant. And that's why Carl is doing his content on him because it's highly searchable on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's why he's doing content on John because the algorithms find John re- relevant. That's why Carl keeps producing content with his fucking name in it. Yep. Because it's highly searchable well, on YouTube. Well, Carl Carl also said, I believe he said in a video, he was like, look, I'm a, kind of a marketing guy. I, oh, I used he? to do marketing advertising. He's a marketing or, guy? He said he was like some sort of marketing strategist that makes, or something like that. Man, that makes more sense now than ever. Marketing people fucking right. rob and steal. I mean, they oh, rape yeah, and yeah. pillage so anyone's if anything, idea ever. He's like, he's like, look, the only way for me that to actually sense. make a podcast that people are going to actually search for and click on I need to really drive the right. SEO of this. That's right. Which means That's I right. gotta use John's name. I gotta make content that is solely dependent on someone else <laughs> it's, to get it, views. It's, it's the same way with this Patreon. So a lot of his Patreon, I'm sure, is devoted to you. Yeah. Which that makes yeah. it highly searchable in SEO and search engine op- Dude, optimization. He my audio book. And right. put it behind his paywall. Well, right, but that's what, what I'm saying. What kind of copyright infringement is that, man? But, but that's what I'm saying is he goofs and and um, what's what's the other guy that's got all the fake followers? What's the uh, Shuli. Oh, Shuli. Yeah, Shuli. Shuli. Yeah, Shuli. Yeah, Shuli goofs on you, and there's a couple other fucking assholes on that show that goof on you. <laughs> no one, no one types in their fucking name to YouTube. Nobody. Yeah. No one goes to YouTube and types in Shuli. Nobody. <laughs> People go to YouTube. Well, I'm pretty sure if you probably typed in Shuli, you'd come up with the video. Stuttering John. John. Right. right. <laughs> it would be John well, content. <laughs> oh my Hold God. on, Tony. I don't know if you heard this one. Yeah, what? Shuli has announced that he's going to do a show on Patreon dedicated to trash. Robbing me. your material. Uh, yeah. yeah, so... So now he's going to steal from Carl, stealing from me. <laughs> on me. We know what, Gabe. Gabe, we should we should do a show absolutely dedicated. 
To goofing on me. To goofing yeah. on John. Hey, look, my That's afternoons are do. open. Okay. They right. think I they think I live in my this, parents' house you know right now. This is perfect. So even better. Maybe we should capitalize on goofing on John since John is totally irrelevant in the YouTube search bar. Yeah. I mean, if <laughs> we, we just if do we, a show, just, we should just, abandon our politics yeah, and yeah. our political kill commentary it, kill it, kill and it. only do John it, because we're it's in gonna for be, the almighty It's going to be called, What About John? Yeah, And that's the go. podcast. <laughs> that's the whole show. It's going to be but us Tony, covering Shuli, covering you Carl, would covering John. I love it if, if Kevin decided to change and only goof on your show. Oh yeah, I would. I would love yeah. that if he would goof on my. Now, uh, obviously, I'm. I would probably say that our names are more searchable on YouTube than his name. Right, I don't even right. Know what Carl's real name right. is. Is it Carl? Right. I, 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 I thought it was Kevin, according to Tony. Kevin, Kevin Cheeseburger or something like mm. that. Yeah. No, no. It, it, look. Well, look, after it, you look at the isotopes, it is Cheeseburger. Well, it could be. <laughs> it could be. It's and it's a hundred percent cheese. And by the way, by the way, no offense to Cheeseburgers, because as all John Taters know now, I love. Yeah. Lisa not just Friday. one. You? Not just one cheeseburger. Tony. I like the double. I like you, the double Tony? cheese. Two. The double cheese, baby. The yeah. double cheese. Tony, oh, they're totally that be? Someone as felt as you, I would only think you eat veggie burgers. <laughs> yeah. I, well, you know, they're uh, they're 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 the non-beef kind. No, I like the beef. One hundred percent beef. Beef. Hey, so Gabe, you're in California, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Tony, you're in Missouri, correct? Correct. Correct. Are you are you close to St. Louis? Well, I'm in the century. You know, you know where the Netflix series Ozarks is shot. That's where I'm originally from. It's like, based on Tony's life, so right? If it, I right. It's based gig, on me. If I booked a gig in St. Louis, would that be drivable for you or no? Well, I mean, it depends. I have a bicycle because now, <laughs> now I'm regulated to the bicycle. Now that everyone's making fun of how I like double cheeseburgers online, yeah. so I have to write. Yeah, you no, got to work it. I mean, it you is, might even have drivable. to maybe just like speed drivable. walk. You know? Well, that's true. That's true. I could speed walk on I seventy. No, no, it, it's drivable. Yeah. Because I got to book a show, and then you can come on and you know, you know, and introduce me. <laughs> oh, you you mean on stage? Yeah. Oh God! We would videotape it, and I would put yeah. it on the internet. That way, that way, Carl had some content to to, you know, we give him some content. Just a little, to make just a, show. a little something extra. Has yeah. he played any of your content yet? Uh, what? Just on here, because see, that's the thing is like he finds it. He can't. He can't go goof on us. Yeah. He can't go goof on. What the hell is he gonna goof on us about on his show? We I don't, already shit on ourselves. Right. We shit on ourselves. We sh <laughs> we're shitting on power. So why? That's the funny thing. Right. I mean Carl probably doesn't know a goddamn thing about politics, so that's why he can't shit on well, us. Well, he's a he's a marketing strategist kind of. Well, guy, that's so true. He's, that's he's true. only well, driving that's what's the so SEO. Funny, Tony, is because Endgame, all three of us did a, an, a two hour show goofing on my DC trip, G goofing mm -hmm. on me and Craigslist, and it was you know I was laughing my ass off, and then he does a show to goof on our DC trip. It's like. Um, didn't we just do that? Yeah, he, he right. rented it. He rented a stage. He yeah, he, a stage he, in he paid. He paid money to rent he a stage money, in right. Nashville, and then they're like, "We're gonna play you some extra content here on stage that uh, we're probably making no money back on this venue." Honestly, mm, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, the, he finds you so relevant because <laughs> you are relevant in this in in the YouTube search bar. That's why he does content on you, and he puts your name in the title and. I mean, his whole show is goofing on Stuttering John. Like, that's the whole fucking thing. Yeah. It should just be that... called the Stuttering John podcast. Right, right. He we should. Do. Uh, right, right, right. You know who also who also finds it incredible uh, and so funny is Popak. Because he loves the trolls. He's like, John, oh, yeah, I love assholes, it. they have no idea what they talk about. I go, I know, Mike. He goes, it's almost like sad but amusing. Oh, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't, when I wake up in the morning and, and I, cause I don't respond to any of the, the, the people out there like tagging me and your shit and like they'll post picture, you know, they say all kinds of crazy ass stupid shit. And it's not really like, like, it's just like world exclusive. Tony yeah. Michaels is going to be on stuttering. Like, yeah. Oh, but breaking. Or they pulled news. a photo from my IMDb and I'm like, cool. Thank you for visiting my page. Right, and driving right, the right, numbers right. up. The other, the other thing too is, um, Last week, because um, Ojeda and and Hal are kind of back at it, right? Um, he was over in Europe, and Hal yeah. had some some family stuff and friends he yeah. was dealing with. And uh, th I guess they came on the show like, "Oh, Tony Michaels and Gabe Sanchez have, are now not part of the show anymore, or some shit." And I'm like, "You people are fucking dumb!" Like, 
You guys are always welcome on the show. You know that. I well, good. You. I'm going to come in every single fucking day just for a few <laughs> minutes just to give Kevin some material. Just a, just a bit of a clip. Yes, you know? some Tony Michaels Tony, material. Yeah. Tony, this is my prediction. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm making the... And just as I said before, and you asked the Midas Touch Brothers, I was the first show they ever were, were on. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm the one who first had them on. And look how big they are. Right. Here's my next. I predict... The Tony Michaels podcast, Tony and Gabe are going to be just as big as the Midas Touch Brothers. That's my prediction. You you hear that, Kevin? You hear that, Kevin? <laughs> you better start fucking getting more staff, man. You're going to need a lot more staff to fucking. Believe me, I got a lot content. of videos on YouTube, so just feel free to go right. through them. I know because we... you guys are equally as lovable, and oh, and you're. You. And you're just as smart don't as say and bad shit about me. I yeah, don't, yeah, I yeah. Don't say that. I don't well, say I really that. enjoy it because the trolls came after me and they're like, "Oh no, Gabe did some Honda commercials," and I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> oh he got paid work. Oh my I god, paid he got paid for to doing my job. Oh my god, <laughs> oh how horrible." <laughs> I know. It's like, like I got Kevin, yeah. It's like Kevin will goof on my movie, right? Okay, I wrote a movie, starred in it, sold it to National Lampoon, made money, have like. Jeff Ross and Bellamy Young in it, and somehow that's a goof. Like, what well, have I'm, you done? Right. Well, I mean, Carl did make that one movie, and what I mean is he got on stage with four other guys in green outfits. Well, oh and yeah, yeah. Played yeah. the Mario theme song. Again, I'm super excited to it's watch a great this movie. Well, I don't know great when we're going to stream it. You know, an exclusive. Yeah, we'll probably debut. have to do it after June. We got a lot of these hearings. Yeah. Now I want to get back to that. Busy. Yeah, gotta, how long are these hearings going to go on for, guys? Well, because I've got just about five more minutes. So these hearings, they start tomorrow, um, and this is the first primetime hearing. But there's four daytime hearings, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Three of them are next week, I believe, and then one of them is the week after, and I believe the prime time. I don't know. We, 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 it's only a week's worth? No, no. no, no, no well, right. there's six hearings, but they spread them out over three weeks. Oh, so there's I six thought it was every day for like three months. No, no, no. no, no. I, I wish. Yeah, right. It was. It's, uh, yeah, it's do the you, ninth. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't, but I'm also like, eh, I mean, yeah. It's uh, Thursday, June 9th, Monday, June 13th, Wednesday, June 15th, Thursday, June 16th, Tuesday, June 21st, and Thursday, June 23rd. The the the, the bookshelf ends here, or the book ends here, are the ones that are prime time. Two right, hours. so the first one and the last one are the mm-hmm. big important ones, so they're doing them in prime time. Now, this one tomorrow, we're supposed to get a 90-minute presentation. We're actually going to air our coverage an hour before, and we're probably going to go at least an hour after, maybe more than that, of original content. So, Kevin, if you want to come get some original, see what original content looks yeah, like, yeah. come on over. Feel free to goof on it. our guests that right. we have on the come show. On, you're yeah. going to really gonna love it. You're going to love it. You're gonna love it. Gonna love well, the they guy. already goof on Popox, so he's well, right. right. Well, I mean, hey, Popox going to be there, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Popox going to be there, we got buddy. Some bigger come names coming on. It's got some pretty big exciting. Names. Come, on, come on over. Yeah, but but here's the thing is that we're going to have guests on before. If they have breaks, we'll have guests in doing commentary during and then commentary after. But I want to let everyone know it's on the Midas Touch YouTube channel. And the reason why is because me and Gabe are producing this show for Midas Touch for their special nice. coverage. So go over, go follow Midas Touch on, on uh, Twitter. Follow them on YouTube. You'll find the link there. Uh, you can follow me and Gabe on Twitter. It's at the Tony Michaels and at I am Gabe Sanchez. And you can also follow our podcast page at Tony Michaels pod. Um, and we will be posting those links but tomorrow is the first one. It's probably going to be the banger, right? Like this is going to be the yeah. This is going to be the hot one that they want everyone to see. So you definitely do not want to miss these hearings. But tomorrow, if you watch live, come check it out on the Midas Touch YouTube channel. We will have it live, front to back, and we will have commentary when they're not speaking and when they're not mm-hmm. doing the hearing. So come watch on the Midas Touch YouTube channel. So, you know, and I know you got to go, but. Why do you got to go, Tony? I'm just curious. Well, I got errands to run, and we got to finish up production. We're still yeah, okay, yeah. ready for tomorrow. Okay, well, here's the, here's the question I'm going to ask you guys, because I'm going to ask the San- how Sparks is coming on after you guys. But what do you think is going to happen with these hearings? Are, because I know a lot of Democratic uh, uh, higher-ups are putting pressure on Garland now, because they're like, dude, you know, you know oh, we're running out of patience. What do you guys predict is going to be the end result from these hearings? I'll let Gabe go first, and then I'll uh, I'll say before yeah. we head out. I think, well, I think, yeah, there's definitely a lot of pressure on Garland. There's been a lot of pressure on Garland since day one. Um, it's really hard because, you know, the, the committee here 
has no uh, power in itself to actually, you know, indict anyone, convict anyone. They can just give a recommendation. Yeah, we've seen them do that to the extent with the DOJ for Peter Navarro. Right. Um, so there, I, I think there is the possibility if they can show enough evidence that's like gl- glaringly like there was a, 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 a coup that they planned. And here are the steps that they took. And here are the things, the documents. We've got all the receipts. We've got all these uh, testimonies. we got testimonies or depositions. I would have a hard time seeing that there wouldn't be someone that they go for. Whether it's Trump or not, that's a big question mark. I don't know. Because we've never really gone after a previous president. So I think well, that we would... With Nixon. Well, yeah, okay. But I mean, like, in the extent of, like, actually going for and convicting and, you know, charging this person with a crime. So I, I look at this and I say... I feel like there's going to be probably a few people that come out that will be convicted of this. It's the question of, are the bigger people going to be done? And I don't know. Well, we already have, we already have plea deals. So here's my take on it. We already have plea deals. And this, this public hearing does nothing but let the American people know what the hell happened because John, they just don't know. They were, they know, they know if Tom Brady's retiring or not from day to day, if he's going to unretire or re-retire, they know, they know if Johnny Depp's an asshole or Amber Heard's a bitch, they know all that stuff. Right. But they don't know this January 6th. They don't know what happens. I think we're going to find out a lot of crazy shit. Small facts that American people, even people who pay attention to this stuff, had no mm-hmm. idea what was going on. Because what we see in the real world, outside the committees, but what we see in the real world of the Department of Justice and Merrick Garland, and I wish people would stop doing anti-democratic things like knocking on the DOJ and Merrick Garland. Number one, Merrick Garland does not have control of the D.C. court. He is the Attorney General of the United States. He's not the prosecutor in D.C. The prosecutor in D.C. is the one going to make these decisions. And the prosecutor in D.C., has not only convict or got indictments on five oath keepers, they've mm-hmm. gotten plea deals on several oath keepers about seditious conspiracy and have pointed in court Brian Ulrich, one of the lieutenants of Stuart Rhodes, who is the founder of the oath keepers, the guy with the eye patch. Um, in open court, the the judge asked Brian Ulrich if his goal was to stop the peaceful transfer of power and if he was planning with Stuart Rhodes to do that. And Brian Ulrich said yes in open court during his plea hearing. Wow. Now that was, that was um, over a month ago. Okay. Now, as of yesterday or the day before, I don't remember. Gabe will probably remind me here, but uh, Enrique Tario, who is yeah, the two leader days, of the yeah, two days, two ago, days. Uh, yeah, is the pr- leader of the Proud Boys. He was the one that wasn't allowed to be in DC, but he was anyways. And he was meeting with Stuart Rhodes, the Oath Keeper, um, the founder, the guy with the eye patch. He met mm-hmm. with him the day before January six. And here's where it's really important, John. And I think. These January 6th select hearings are going to point towards this. Maybe not this first one, but as we tick on, they're going to point to this. There is one person who is in connection with Donald Trump that has connection to those Proud Boys and those Oath Keepers, and his name is Roger Stone. Roger Stone, we know, was with the Proud Boys the day before. The Proud Boys was supposed to give him security, and and at last moment, they switched his private security from Proud Boys to Oath Keepers. Now, why is that important? Because Stuart Rhodes was the one, the guy with the eye patch, was the one with the orders over the QRF. The QRF is the stash of weapons that was across the Potomac that mm-hmm. was ready at hand. If someone, anyone, maybe the only person who could declare martial law. Now, here's the thing. Stuart Rhodes... Stuart Rhodes, who is the founder of the Oath Keepers, who's been charged with seditious conspiracy, who Brian Ulrich says the plan was to make sure there was no, quote unquote, peaceful transfer of power, is the one who was in charge of the firearms and the weapons stored across the Potomac in case someone were to announce or declare martial law. That one person would be Donald Trump. Now, Stuart Rhodes would have to know if Donald Trump declared martial law. And how would he do that? He would probably put one of his lieutenants or a couple of his lieutenants next to the person who might be communicating with Donald Trump, the person who would declare martial law. This is not hard to see. The only thing we need is the evidence spared before us to Mm -hmm. show us what what was actually happening during that time period when they were breaking windows and smearing their shit on the walls of the Capitol. While Stuart Rhodes, the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys, Donald Trump, Roger Stone, Rudy Giuliani, Steve Bannon and the like were trying to overturn our vote. They were trying to take our government down. They were trying to undo our Constitution. That is the most important part. It is a very serious game. We make a lot of jokes about it. But, folks, if they would have been successful that day at tearing down our Constitution, you would not have state governments. You would not have local governments. All our way of life is all pinned on this one document. 
and it's not the piece of it's not the piece of paper that is the that that is important. It is the mm-hmm. idea, it is the principle, yep. and it is the exercise of democracy. And we cannot sacrifice autocracy to save our democracy. That is what the MAGA want. That is what the Trump supporters want. That is what DeSantis wants. Greg Abbott. That is what Steve Bannon. That is what Roger Stone. That's what the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys wanted. They wanted to sacrifice democracy for autocracy. And we have to stop blaming the DOJ because the DOJ has people in prison right now with their cold feet on the floor for this for this act of insurrection. They have the Proud Boys who just got a superseding indictment, five of them, for seditious conspiracy. There's three Oath Keepers who have pled guilty to that charge. There's two more that are, including Stuart Rhodes. So let this process play out. But what I will tell you that is most important than letting this process play, play, out, play out is to pay attention to the facts that the January 6th Select Committee are going to lay out and talk to people about them. Let them know what's going on because that's most important. Mm-hmm. With that, I have to run. Gabe, you can stick around, but John... No, no, no. I, I mean, I have Hal, I have well, Hal waiting in the wings. The only thing I, I'll say to you, Tony, that scares me yeah. is do you think Biden, if Trump is found guilty of charges... Please tell me you don't think Biden would pardon him. I, I I'm not oh. real sure. I don't I don't even I don't even know I don't I don't know what it looks like for a court to convict Trump because he's a former president. And what I mean by that is it we, we've never done that before, like Gabe said earlier. Like we've never been well, Gerald Ford pardoned. Well, right, right. right, right. We're talking about like seditious conspiracy. But that's, but that's the reason like... why. The reason why Ford pardoned Nixon is so we didn't have to do that, right? right. Um, and we actually, our country as a collective whole, owes an apology to, to Richard Nixon. We act like he's the the highest crime criminal that's ever been. And we're going to find out over the next few weeks that he's not even close. Yeah. He's, he's fucking kittens compared to what these people tried to do to our Constitution. So I'll leave with that. And again, yeah. go watch tomorrow on the Mindest Touch uh, YouTube channel. We will be covering the, carriage, uh, the coverage live. We will also have commentary an hour before during if there's a break and then an hour Mm -hmm. after so our coverage will start at seven eastern on the mindest touch youtube channel thank you john for having us on we gotta get to work don't forget this saturday beer on the balcony well we'll 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 (laughs) we'll plan the isotopes thing i really gotta dig into this content yeah yeah i gotta make sure i know my background on the isotopes i gotta figure out exactly what their genre is (laughs) okay that sounds good and we'll talk to you soon bye-bye all right i'll see you all right, before I bring in Hal, let me just do my sponsor. Sorry, Hal, but uh, this is the uh, this is a necessary evil that I have to do. It's not even an evil. It's just what I got. What I have to do here to uh, to uh, keep 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 the lights on, if you will, for lack of a better cliche. Our partners at BetOnline.ag continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's NBA Finals, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball scores, all the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Bet online is a continued source for your all your sporting wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code CLNS50, that's CLNS50, to get the bonus and get into the action. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. And uh, now, before I bring in Hal, there was one more thing that I will bring in Hal to watch with me. And this is something I love doing uh, every, uh, every, every show when it's available. And I'm sure Hal will enjoy this as well. Uh, let's see. And here it is. Okay, and wait a second. Let me just start from the beginning. So, Hal, let me bring you in, and then we will watch this together, and I would love to get your comments for the smartest man on the planet, the Hal Sparks. So here we go. Uh, let me bring that up. Let me get Hal in in the room here. And Hal, hey, here there we go. I am. Look at that. Here we go. Here Little is old me. Okay. Here's the last week. Last week in the Republican Party. Check it out. Okay. Wake up, America. Wake up. Okay? For four okay. hours is considered a shithole, like President Trump used to say. If you're a Republican, you can't even 
to lie to Congress or lie to an FBI agent or they're coming after you, they're going to bury you. I'll take Biden and every single senior staff member in there. And do and what? Will and do what? Them with subpoenas. And we'll, we'll start with the impeachment of Biden. Our kids today face so many problems, it's off the chart. They can be hungry. So I do need folks to go to laurenforfreedom.com to help me defeat this disgusting groomer in Colorado. We should be proud of nationalism and we should be proud of an America first nationalism. You could push to an end of the war in Ukraine which Biden is single-handedly prolonging. He's not even playing golf like other presidents. Well, that was a, that's the <laughs> Why question. He can play at any does. course he wants to, and he doesn't even play golf. Candace Taylor, for every single vote that Kemp got, he took her, got their votes, and then Candace got 5% back. If the people who did rebate and cheated are watching, I do not concede. If you'd like some words about encouragement, motivation, and getting through the difficult times that we're living through, just call on me. Through Cameo and the magic of Cameo. I'm a 21 year retired Iraq war veteran, January 6th dependent Navy mom. All the and uh, yes, yes, my you. trial starts September 12th. We need to go back to burning women alive more. Like when they're convicted of crimes, obviously, not not random acts of violence. Probably in about four or five generations, no one will be straight anymore. Hello? Hello? Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. President. Welcome to the Young Women's Leadership Summit at Turning Point USA. Wow, that sounds so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> Hal, how do you respond to that? Uh, uh, with uh, utter disgust. I mean, um, <laughs> a not surprised at all. B, uh, like it's it, this is every week in the Republican Party currently. What's left of it? It's basically this. It's like a. Re, it's sort of like an animated carcass that <laughs> that doesn't understand sarcasm and and is constantly over responding to to normal sentences and under responding to anything that someone passes as a. As you know, as a minor slight, like they, they take it, the current Republican Party takes the most offensive uh, slur slurs you can use against a person um, as compliments <laughs> after a school shooting. Like they, at this point, they're done. They're like they're and and they know it. And I have to say, you know, in in reference to what you were talking about with the guys beforehand, um, I keep hearing this whole thing. If they had only done this, we wouldn't have a country anymore. If they'd have been this close, if this by this, you have to understand that's true. If you're talking about an entirely different group of human beings, <laughs> but the Republicans are such fuck ups. That you, <laughs> you, you, you watch by the end of uh, like the the decision about SCOTUS that was going to set them up and be friggin' magic is going to drive Democratic voters to the polls this fall on a scale they haven't seen before. And they're going to end up, you know, recognizing this was the time the worm turned, where they bit off more than they could chew. They took what victories they had, and they're like, "All right, let's let's finally put this nail in the coffin." And it it isn't going to work out. It's that it's just that classic thing of like, you know, the dog ca caught the car that they've been barking at, and they don't. They're just being dragged down the street with their ma mouth stuck on the bumper. That's where they are. And I. I as, we'll talk about the committee stuff too, because I think that's you know that's yeah. Oh, no, I have tons to, have to talk on. to you about how. That's why I was like, yeah, how? Please come on today. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, the, I'm I'm excited about this thing. I think you know my worry is uh, only with uh, with the lawyers that are in the Democratic Party, and there are a lot of them that they participate in a legal structure that may not understand the uh, strongly the optics a way to create drama around the optics that would drive the electorate towards understanding the depth of the concerns. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you got a, you have a jury, the U S the, the, the general public is the jury in this situation. And you're trying somebody for murder or, you know, a Rico or something like that. And instead of at the photos you have of the actual crime being committed and all that kind of stuff, you use like, uh, like, courtroom drawings just shy of 
the actual actual as far because you know you don't need to you don't want to gross anybody out with the actual crime scene photos and you know it's being televised so you're going to hold back you know this part of it and that was there was a little bit of that in this in the impeachment trial um even the one around Jan 6 you know the, like that that was related to that that they kind of pulled their punches a little bit and my hope is is that they learned their lesson you know from trying to like be statesmanly in a situation where the Republican Party has gone off the deep deep end and Donald Trump was trying to literally destroy our system of government. Now, again, there was no situation where it was going to succeed. There is yeah. none. And all these assholes are like, I'm they're practicing. It's, it was just practice. It's good. They're going to get another bite at the apple. No, they are fucking not. There is not another cultist lined up after Trump. Trump himself is not going to get another group gathered on the fucking lawn in front of the Capitol during an electorate. They might have these state elector shenanigans and all that kind of shit, but lawsuits will largely take care of that stuff. And Democrats in those states and in the House are not going to let it slide. No, and, and I'll tell you what, no establishment Republicans, and that means anybody who's actually got their job and wants to keep it, that, that would be the establishment. I don't even have, it could even be the maggot ones. None of them are going to let these these fake electorate things go through or shuffle around the voting because it's going to fuck them at some point, and they know it. The system itself is how they got in office, so they can't very well say the system itself is fundamentally flawed. Well, then quit. You know, if you think the elections of 2020 were illegitimate, that includes yours. Step down. But none of them are going to do that, and none of them are going to allow the crazier shit that's going on in state houses to, you know, to do too much overreach. Quite frankly, the irony is, is the person who probably did the most um, genuine election shenanigans in the country previous to 2020 was Brian Kemp in the in the race against Stacey Abrams, where he was literally serving as Secretary of State, and did he? Did he make up fake ballots? No. Did he pay for fake ballots or to get ballots destroyed? No. But he just limited the amount of voting machines in certain districts, namely black ones, and and knew that all he had to do was shave about a point and a half off and he would be good. And that would give him a, a prop up in the lead up to the election that would allow him to take it. And that's all it did take. So the irony is, is that it hinges on him. And Donald Trump is A, saying he's lying about his election that you can't be trusted and no de no Republican in Georgia should vote for Brian Kemp for governor. So basically keep him, even you're going to have a Hillary Clinton 2016 situation with Brian Kemp on the Republican side though in the state of Georgia because these fuckers aren't going to vote for him. They might vote down the ticket so they can vote for MTG and whatever, but they're not going to they're going to leave gov the governor blank cuz they're not going to vote for Stacey Abrams and they're sure shit not going to vote for Brian Kemp. He's a friggin' mortal enemy of Donald Trump or Raffensburger. So both of them, Raffensburger, interestingly enough, will probably win and keep his seat because of the uh, because of like Democrats and everybody across that. That he showed that he, even though he's conservative, he did his job better than Kemp did when he was Secretary of State and moving in. And Raffensburger might believe he has a future in politics that you know he's looking long game. Kemp doesn't. Kemp wants to run for president in 2024. So if he loses this, he just goes into the wilderness for a couple of years and, you know, re and launches a campaign as the dude who stood up to him, but a true conservative voice who believes in America first, but doesn't need all this, you know, pussy grabbing nonsense. And he's got a shot if that's the case, that it'd be between Kemp and DeSantis and they would just eat each other alive and Biden would walk into another term. Uh, Hal, I, I do. I have plenty of questions to ask you about what's going to unfold tomorrow. But before I do that, I do want to ask you about our elections here in California. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, it, it's it's odd because I'm so focused on what's going on in D.C. Mm -hmm. that I lose focus on what the hell's going on in California. Now, right. From yeah. what I could assess is that Rick Caruso was a Republican who converted to a Democrat. Why? Well, because by, you know, by modern MAGA standards, it's the only way he could run attached to a party. You know, like there again, I've said many times, if you're a liberal or a conservative, a progressive, you know, um, it, and you genuinely have those beliefs, you're not a psychopath, but you genuinely believe certain economic theories, certain 
socio-political theories around that. You can have an entire conversation within the, the Democratic Party, you know, and and reasonable conversation with somebody who disagrees with you. In the yeah. Republican Party, that became increasingly not true. And you have to be a pure, like, true believer. Like, we have a purity test problem that shaves edges off of our vote every fucking election. And it's why we don't have sensible gun laws. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it is why, and I'm, I'm not going to let that go. And everybody gets mad at me for vote shaming, but fuck them. That's, it's, it's why this shit never moves forward because people are like, I'm, I'm all for you to do that. Hal. I'm all for it. This, this, this one step forward, two step back horse shit can go pound sand, but Caruso for all practical purposes qualifies as effectively a conservative Democrat mayoral candidate in Los Angeles. Like that's, that's as far, and, and LA's never going to elect a Republican again. So if you're going to get any of those values, the Republicans in LA and the kind of like, I'm voting for whoever the winning Democrat is crowd, it, they're going to pile in behind. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be listed as an independent in the fall because I didn't want to run against Karen Bass. Well, yeah. But hold on now. Just, I, you know, I'm sorry. Okay. So now they're saying there's going to be a runoff, right? So It'll be between Karen Bass and Caruso. Now in the in the in the Democratic primary. Yes, but then they're going against Garcetti. No, Garcetti's out. I don't know who the Republican is. It's a, they were going against everybody else. Oh, okay. All right. So they're go so whoever wins that one goes it's against the Democrat. The Republican yeah, is. yeah, if there's a Republican oh. at all, oh. if they waste their fucking money. It won't. Garcetti's the fucking uh, Biden's uh, ambassador to India now. Oh, that's what I was saying. Like, I don't see. I don't. That's how bad I well, am. That, it, no, no. Here's the problem with the Caruso I know fight Newsom was. Is our governor? Yes. Good. Good. Very good. Well. Well done. <laughs> um. Uh. Yes. And he and he shall be again. Um. Just get used to the idea. He did a solid job. And, and I voted for him. Yep. As did I. Um, he's a good guy. I know him personally. I met him years ago when he was mayor of, when he was still with Kimberly. Um, weird. Gargoyle. Yeah. I met him. He and I walked to, uh, um, the Supreme court building in San Francisco for marriage equality. I was right next to him in line. We had a great talk. He I seems just, like a great fucking guy to be He's honest. great. He's great. I mean, he's, He's he's like he, it's like he like he comes out of a Kennedy dispenser and he's got you know really good political instincts and he's you know his voice is raspy now from years of just having to talk and talk and talk because it's a talky job especially in California because you're placating interests all over the place and I will not call them special interests because there's no there's everybody's a special interest like and especially because that word is so fucking doesn't mean anything anymore um, because the Republicans consider. Um, um, like the coal lobby, uh, military uh, contractors, and teachers unions to be special interest groups. You're like, all right, well, <laughs> piss off. Like that doesn't mean anything anymore. So, um, yeah. So that's what's good. That's what's going to happen. That so basically, there was just you can think of it as sort of a a push from the right on uh, in Democrat politics in. Uh, you know, in, in Los Angeles. And it's, and interestingly enough, like I like Karen Bass. I think she'd been solid, but I didn't want to sign up and run in the primary as a Democrat, list myself as a democratic candidate and run against Karen Bass if she had a shot. But Caruso at that point, when I was making my decision, uh, wasn't even part of the conversation really. And but he's and, spending a fortune on ads right yeah. now. Oh yeah. Well, and he's got a bunch of, I mean, he's got like Snoop Dogg backed him. So, like, he's got... And fucking Gwyneth Paltrow, I was shocked at. Well, no, see, it's not that shocking. God, don't panic about fucking Caruso. And Kardashian. Right. Her, you should panic about. <laughs> um, it's ironic that she's supporting him in that regard because he's he's not on board with her, um, like, prison reform stuff. Um, yeah. And won't be. And nobody's going to be because look at look at what happened in San Francisco. That worm has turned, too. The San Francisco's DA got recalled because of his, like, he refuses to to prosecute anybody for, like, drug crimes and gun crimes and shit like that. He The, the year before he got in office, they prosecuted, the DA's office prosecuted, like, 80 people for dealing fentanyl. Not We're not talking about people who got it on them when they get frisked sometime. 
We're talking about dealers, people selling large quantities of fentanyl. And that number has been by the, the dealers, number of dealers and the availability of the drug has always been going up because it was introduced new about eight years ago and it's been climbing in availability and, and they're making more of it. Production is high, right? So it's not like it dropped off. In his first year, he, he uh, only prosecuted three. He was turning everybody loose. And, and at one point you have to ask yourself, I think, how, at what point are you no longer a progressive uh, you know, uh, I guess, um, like criminal defendant minded, uh, forgiving justice system advocate. And what, what, what point do you cross over into? You're just helping people exterminate themselves. And you go, if we give it two years, all the drug addicts will die of fentanyl. If we just let it roll in and problem solved, I'll look like I, it'll look like arrests are down because these fuckers will be dead. At a certain point, it looks like a back a backhanded genocide. What's passing for even the gun crime in the country, where you've got these progressive DAs that are supposedly Soros back that everybody's whinging about everywhere. Those folks, Philadelphia, Chicago, particularly um, Portland and Los and San Francisco, you know, and you know, LA's didn't go that way. Um, anywhere you're seeing this spike in crime, you're seeing a lot of people who are basically, if you use a gun in a crime but you don't fire it, they're turning you loose. Well, then you're just going to use it next time. And you know that since you've already got something on, you've got a, a, a mark on your record from that arrest and they're being nice to you, that person has to die now because you can't have a witness. So it's even worse. It ended up being like the three strikes problem. Three strikes had that problem as well. Because on your third strike, you might as well kill the fucker. That was part of the crime bump that happened in the 90s. was because three strikes was supposed, you know, the idea was the problem was who you were giving the first two strikes to. Like it's, you have to look at individuals like they're individuals, not some sort of tide of, of skin color that you see going ebbing and flowing. Like it's like, they're all a mass. Human beings are individuals. And if you believe that they all deserve due process and that due process should reflect their character and their circumstance, not political tides of what's going around. And these guys set this system up where they're just turning people loose and the, like the carjacking murders in Philly are part, uh, you know, they're up specifically because, well, they used a gun in a carjacking before, but they can go home. And that's, that's, you know, that's just teasing them into worse criminality. You have to give them some time so they, they, they recognize the seriousness of what's going on. Hello, Benny Loco. Oh, oh, it's working. I, I, you know, do you have your thing in subscription mode? Me? What do you mean? Yeah. Do you have your YouTube in subscription mode? My YouTube? No. You mean Twitch? Okay, I put it in subscription mode so everyone who wants to chat. Oh, has to subscribe. Yeah, so I was afraid because I hadn't gotten any Super Chats. I was afraid that it wasn't, it somehow screws that up or something. No, you should be able, even in subscription mode, you should be able to see Super Chats. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Benny, thank you. And I wasn't trying to do a, uh, but also in how that I have a question from, Julie, I don't know if you saw that one, but I just wanted to put, you know, I had it up before. She was no, asking, I was too busy listening to the sound of my own voice. <laughs> well, it's uh, I'm scrolling back, but I didn't see it. I don't know which one you mean. She was asking for you to um, somehow put the put my Twitch into a thing so that they could send emotes or something. Oh, you need emotes. You they they want you to make Stuttering John emotes for your Twitch. I don't know. She was asking, that the, Julie, can you send that again? I'm sorry for um, for putting a halt to the conversation. I, I just can't find it now. I just had it up, but I can't find it. Oh, here you go. Um, John, have Hal help you go affiliate on Twitch. We need emotes. Do you know what that means? Um, yes. Well, you've got, okay. He's got to get a certain size of audience to get affiliate level you've got to and he'll have to be on longer is all you know that's that's the thing um i'll we'll we'll see if i can find um let's see hold on i'm rating your channel on mine um right now so it'll you know it'll pop over in there and hopefully that'll help with a, a little bit of viewership um hey mark hey, thanks for the 6666 john and hal i was always afraid of that number 666 until hal told me it was all a load of horse shit yeah <laughs> 
His literal, it's it, you know, the Christians had to speak in code, and um, you know, they had to write a numeric code to hide their religion because the, um, because of the uh, like the uh, Sakari Jews. I want, I'm going to say it wrong, but um, a specific Jewish sect which was killing everybody and the Roman the Empire. It's far. No, wasn't well, far. No, nope. no, it was a specific text of the time, uh, 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 like um, cult of the time. Um, that was you know, killing anybody who wasn't a, you know, sort of a true believer and anybody who believed in a Messiah. So, um, and the Roman empire was after them. So uh, 666 was the number of the empire. And the idea yeah. was at some point there was a theory, not unlike what we're seeing on YouTube today, like a conspiracy theory that eventually the Romans were going to brand everyone and you wouldn't be able to travel or be in a Roman territory without the brand. And the brand would go on your head so you wouldn't have to walk around with it on your arm in case anybody declared war on Rome and decided to kill everybody who was associated with it, you know, because everybody balked at the idea of putting it on their arm like the pirate P and, uh, you know, Pirates of the Penzance on his on his wrist. Yeah. Um, so they would do it behind your ear, in theory, they, and they were going to stamp you with the 666 that said you were part of the Roman Empire. But they, and uh, they were referencing the 666. But the Romans would put some other symbol that would, you know, a little brand that says you are a Roman citizen. If anybody finds your corpse, bring it back. And you wow. have to understand, like, that sounds nuts by today's standard. But we live with we, we've lived our whole lives with like photo ID and yep. bank accounts and, and passports and shit like yep. that. And it was just fucking desert and horribleness as far as the eye could see at, you know, at, as mitigatory steps in primitive societies. It's not half bad, like a teeny little brand that lets you know you're part of this nation or community, um, yeah. you know, and if you want to do business with anybody in it, you'd have to have the actual one. You know, that was kind of what they were talking about. So yeah. uh, that became part of the it was both a conspiracy idea. Somebody probably floated it in the Roman Senate. But why six six six? Well, they uh, they were just numbering it out and whatever. It was just it was, you know, the, some numbers are easy to chip out and others aren't. I don't know. <laughs> Kenneth Otto, uh, thanks for five bucks. This one shows the love of the show. Yeah, I appreciate. I didn't. I was getting nervous because mm -hmm. I didn't know if it, if it was something I did, which is entirely possible. As well, here's the thing: you can set it on there, and then you can open your YouTube uh, channel, your your actual uh, like pro video producer window. Yeah. And you can see the super chats come no matter what happens. So you could have it just set on slow mode and blah, 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 but you'll see them come. But out. I don't get, but they're not allowed the super chat on my, on my stuff that goes just to my YouTube members and to my Patreon members. I, right. Like, the, they're private. Yeah. Of course. West Webb, thanks for the 777. Not competing. This is my final. There you go. <laughs> oh, I don't have to be a final one, Wes. So, Cal. Yeah, I asked, uh, you know, uh, Tony and Gabe, and I'm just I just had this fear this morning and I'd love to get your answer to this. Let's say that Trump somehow was indicted. Yeah. Please tell me Biden would not pardon him. Oh. No, absolutely not. <laughs> OK, no, and, no he, he's, he won't uh, pardon him. I there, If anything, it would be. I'm commuting it because he's old. He's not going to jail, jail, but the sentence sticks. Because, you know, it's kind of like Nixon, like the the fact that it happened. It, you know, we're not talking about Pol Pot. We're talking about somebody who swung and missed at wrecking democracy, but he was so ham handed and stupid. It never was going to work. But if he gets if he tried to pull this shit off. You know, like a low level mob boss who's only got seven years to live, they can throw him in. You know, they can sentence him. We're going to sentence you eight years when you got seven years to live. And then we're going to, you know, but we'll hold it in a bait. And you to your, you know, your house arrest stuff is no rallies, no tweets about politics or something. You just have to, you know, because you couldn't do that if you were in jail and you've given up your rights. You can either give up your rights to walk around or you can give them up, uh, give up all your rights. That's where the whole freedom of speech thing. You can't make money off your um, books and all that kind of stuff when you're in jail for a crime in particular. And that, you know, and that would be almost anything political in this case with him. So that would cover it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's right. Ford pardoning Nixon costing the 76 election. 
Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I'll, I think so. I think it was, you know, and it wasn't because Ford was necessarily a bad guy. Also, you know, it gave Carter the edge. Um, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, Carter climbed into a nuclear reactor and saved the world. So uh, the, the dude was already awesome. We just, history has made him into Mr. Rogers. Yeah, in a you know, bad and way. I, like I, uh, I think it's so sad of what society did to Jimmy Carter. He wasn't a horrible president. It's just, and and he's still, what is he, 96, and he's still doing all this Habitats for Humanity. Yeah. I mean, the guy's a really good fucking person, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, he always was. That's the, you know, and yeah. that was his problem because he, and, you know, even in terms of um, of Reagan, he sort of, you know, brought a handshake to a gunfight in yeah. term, you know, in, in the debates and all this kind of stuff, because he was operating from a, well, we're all here for the same reason. We all want yep. the same thing. We just differ um, on the, uh, you know, on, on the hows and the what's. Yeah. And just so people go, well, I would Biden pardon him. The reason why I even asked the question is because a lot of times they say, Ah, it's bad to, you know, you know, to have a, a, like any president be put in jail. It looks bad for America. Yeah. That's the reason why I asked. It's not a stupid question at all. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, there's a, there's a couple of aspects of it where you can see where they would, they, you want it on the record, but it, the world's not, you know, he's not a physical threat to the world, but you but have now, to say. That's where I wanted to do. In lieu on, of, wait. right. Okay. That's where I wanted to argue with, not argue, but that's where I wanted to disagree with you on is I still have friends who still believe that the election was stolen. And, and that's because Trump is still out there, you know, lying and like, and saying it, and they still believe Biden did not win the election. And so Trumpism is still alive. How? Well, except that Trumpism is precisely why the Republicans are staring down the barrel of a very dangerous midterm. And they're patting themselves on the back and trying to reassure people that they're going to win amongst their voters because they deserve it. And it was fixed last time and it won't be fixed this time. Meanwhile, this dickhead is tooling around the country and sending out statements all the time that it was rigged. It's still rigged. The primary was rigged. Brian Kemp's whole thing was rigged. There's no way he got 70% of the fucking vote in the Republican primary in a state that he, you know, has been elected by like what of course he did it's a fucking republican primary you prick but he's he's eating into this and there are some of those people absolutely but they're not going to vote they're they're going to i mean they're not consequential to any of this argument i'm not going to worry about anybody who isn't going to go in and push a button or pull a lever on election day and 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 a lot of them the biggest trump supporters aren't going anywhere near a voting booth this fall. No matter what he How, says. did you vote yesterday? Yeah. I, well, I voted a week ago by by mail. Did you vote for Karen Bass or no? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. And I'm um, sure you voted for Gavin Newsom. Of course. Now, Hal, before I get into a way more important thing, one that, well, wait, I take that back. Before I get into more, more political things, how was your Nerd Hallen gig yesterday? Uh, perfect and beautiful and wonderful and fun and glorious and great. Okay, can mighty... we hear a little song? A little... A little yes, little... you can come to a show. <laughs> you, live, you live in Los Angeles and you have to ask me how the show was because you couldn't come out on a Tuesday fucking night at 9 o'clock. I'm you... a diehard Yankee fan, Hal. I, 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 you know, I, I have to watch the well, Yankees. Y- uh, uh, all right, uh, then then you're gonna have to make it up for me uh, to me by driving out to Yamava the next time we play it, which is out in fucking you know. Oh, I would love fifth. to go to the casino. You could, yeah, two t- two ten the fifteen. Um, but yeah, when so, are you playing there? I don't know. We play there a bunch. They they rotate us through. So oh, that's like the- a We'll do like uh, you know uh, uh, you know something like some easy song like you really got me or something. Um. You have to learn um, a Hagar song, like you, "There's Only One Way to Rock" or something like that. Because I know that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not that hard. Um, so you, <laughs> yeah, you could bring it and do that one, and then we'll that'll, to, that'll, I, that'll be our way of working that. into the set, huh? Yeah. Well, they they uh, uh, so did Van Halen when with 
with Eddie and yes. and Sammy, they would do a, two of his songs. They do fifty five, and they would do yep. a, a yes, one way to did. rock. I saw that. I saw that in Jersey. Yeah, and so we we've been we've been talking about adding that to the set. So yeah, that'll be good. Um, bam, bam, so, bam, yeah, middle, down, down, yeah, it's down, 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 great. Down, down, Very down, Montrose down. riff. <laughs> Yep. That was the most Montrose riff of his solo stuff that took off. Um, yep. So, uh, anyways, it was lovely and great, and and I uh, like I we talked about it this morning. Everybody can buy, go back and watch the morning live stream if you missed it. It was a very uh, emotional morning show. It was great. I don't know what How Pappy did, and Harriet says, Benny Loco. Uh, you both need to come to play Pappy and Harriet's. That's someplace up near here. How's oh, I'll talk all day and How sing all night. I'll talk all day, sing all night, and then talk all day again. It's uh, it's 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 called being professional, <laughs> you know. Because I, I in, in all honesty, that any I believe anybody can sing or tell a joke, they just can't do it again tomorrow, and that's that. It's really the difference. And and for me, that was actually a turning point with my singing, was that I recognized I was a good singer, really great in some moments, but I didn't have control of my voice. So I would just throw the, uh, it would all be Hail Marys. And then the next night I couldn't talk at all. And like, that's not professional, especially if we've got another show. Up, I, you know, I went to Katie Aggressor. She taught the best. I mean, Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. uh, Penny Lapa. I could, I can give you a five minute warm up and warm down hell. You'll never lose your voice again. Well, uh, I have, my, my voice is rock solid these days. And I, um, and part of it is, is because like the splits, like the front splits, I operate in a way that I'm always warmed up. Oh, theory. okay. So, How, yeah. uh, and my last personal question, then we'll get back to the jam. Sure. Things. No, no, no. Um, All politics is local and nothing is more local than your throat. I, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I had to sign up the Peacock to actually watch the Yankees. And I saw that Peacock is playing all, all the seasons of Queer as Folk. Uh-huh. So that means you're getting the ton of residuals. Oh no no no! You, sorry, you're. Uh, you, that's a new show, or not? Or the, is that the reruns, or like somebody just did that? Peacock's the new. Um, it's NBC's pay service. Yeah, that's their new show. It's oh, not, that's not your show. Not us. No. Oh, because because. Because I saw it like the fucking house making bank now, man. No no no, and. Uh, some people don't know this, but the first two seasons of Queer as Folk, we were under an Actra contract, um, uh, unbeknownst to us. Which is Canada. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't can- get any residuals for Trip and the Rip because of that. Yeah, yeah. Canada's, yeah. Can- for all this whole, like, progressive utopia and union paradise and, oh, how lovely, Canada fucks their actors sideways, yeah. man. <laughs> yes. And and so the first the first two seasons, we don't get any residuals. The, I did the, the, three seasons of Trippin' the Rip with Gina Gershon and, and Stephen Root. Zero fucking yeah. residuals. Yeah. And so uh, at the in the third uh, season, Sharon Gless and I held out. We we basically said we're not re-signing unless we get a, after, a, you know, an, a, a SAG contract at that point. And how I did 35 different voices. It was like, like an animated series. I did 35 voices on that show and yet zero. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I, I don't get, and by the way, the universal SAG rule that was in place, even when we were doing it should have covered us, but for some yeah. reason, yep. Uh, we did. not That still pisses me off because, and <laughs> when you see it, when you see Showtime re-airing it, they'll re-air the first two seasons. And then the last three seasons are in there. You know, you have to, subscribe to their plus so that it's in you know on demand they don't air it they only air the first two <laughs> so how now here it comes yep what is going to happen what could we look forward to or not look forward to from the smartest man on the planet who has yet to be wrong how sparks tell us Tell us progressives here, the 400 people here now, the 5,000 that'll be here as, you know, as this goes, tell us what to expect 
Tomorrow well, night uh, and to many of the, the rest yeah. of the series. To, to, the, to many of the people who watch your show and my show and Midas Touch and the like, um, not, there are there aren't going to be a lot of surprises. We've been aware of this shit. We're the people. It's like the Game of Thrones people who've been watching it from the beginning, and then the uh, the COVID hit, and everybody started binging, and all your yeah. friends were talking talking to you about season two, and you're like, dude, I know. Um, <laughs> but it's new to them and, yeah. and they're just discovering it. So they've got to deal with it as if it's just being discovered. It's a little bit like when I go to a Marvel film and they see, they need to do an origin film. And I'm like, there's thousands of comic books. Why are you sitting here? If you don't get it, go to ask somebody who took you to the movie. They'll tell you how it started. He got a shot and a thing and he was, now he's a robot. Let's move on. <laughs> and you just watch the goddamn movie, but you got to tell me the story of like, It'd be a great idea if I could learn how to fly with a machine, you know, like get on with it. So there's going to be a little of that. There'll be frustration for a lot of people who already know this, but they're trying to set up a narrative and I'm hoping it's a little, it's tighter than the, uh, the impeachment hearing was. But my belief is, is that at the end of it, they are going to make a recommendation uh, for prosecution of Donald Trump to the DOJ. They're going to do it somberly and we hate to do it. But we're going to recommend that the that the Justice Department do a full fledged investigation and indict him based on the information we have here, and we're going to enter everything we've gathered and shown to the American people into the public record and also to the DOJ to and it's their ball to take it. Then it's Merrick Garland's job, and he's been gathering stuff all along. And this recommendation from Congress would give him the sort of political cover to move forward on the stuff that he's gathered now. The, again, Hal, be right again. Please be right again, Hal. The the question is the question is, and and this is a, you know is a real question. I genuinely, um, there's uh, there's many ways this could go. the The reality is is that recommendation is going to set off Fox News that they're trying to they want to lock him up and blah blah blah. And then it's going to be watch for all the hashtag. Um, Lock him up, lock her up, lock everybody up, lock yourself up, you know, when that starts happening. Yeah. Um, because that'll be the joke. They're trying to lock up the president. Like, motherfucker, you're trying to lock up Obama, Eric Holder, Hillary Clinton. Hunter Biden. Just, yeah, everybody. <laughs> they were, you want to lock up everybody. We Colin just want, Kaepernick. <laughs> yeah, right. We want to lock up people who have, we have legit, you know, who didn't sit for 11 hours on the Benghazi, you know, yeah. committee and talk, that kind of thing. So, um, uh, the recommendation will happen. That'll be the, that's what this is about. This is building yeah. that case. And I've said to everybody, like, there's an interesting, I just saw it a second ago, um, this article about, um, like, Trump um, being a, like, there's an, uh, like, a, I don't know if they like, ultra MAGA has been this idea that it was MAGA without Trump. That's what people are calling ultra MAGA. I'm, I'm more MAGA even than Trump is. Yeah. So ultra MAGA became that thing. Biden used it and then Trump took it because he recognized that that's they were trying to do away with him. They were trying to they're trying to broom him. And there's an article about people talking about Trump in terms of he's not a god. This is a movement about something bigger than politics. And this is about America and blah, blah, blah. And that conversation is a is a turning point for Trump. That's 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 bad news, because if that means they're going to vote for like super, they're going to try to elect MAGA candidates and all that kind of stuff in primaries. Basically, they're going to become the the vitriolic Bernie bros of the of the 2015 cycle towards Trump and his people. And they've already I mean, look at the booing of Dr. Oz. That's it. That's ultra MAGA. Trump actually goes up there gives Oz his unflinching endorsement and a huge group of like front rowers, the people who go to anything Trump is at, yep. turn their back on him. Yep. I they stood it. there with their backs to em to Emmett Oz, uh, and Emmett Oz. And, they, and then they like, and then they booed him actively. Um, but he still won the prick. By this much. And it was only because the, it, there was a fight between him and a, an establishment Dem, that was the closest one, or an establishment Republican, rather. Um, and then this, uh, like, uh, the ultra-maga woman, the woman who was calling herself ultra-maga, 
who everybody was like, that took votes from Oz. And you're like, no, it actually leans more towards, it shows the fact that Trump's crowd is moving away from his suggestions, specifically Oz in this case. And the narrowness of it, I, I mean, it should have triggered a, a, you know, they should have had a runoff in that, but the rules are different there. Um, but. Oh, Andrea Brower, 10 bucks. Thank you. How, yes. How, they, how, if there are those GOP that were involved with Jan 6, how and what will happen to them? Oh, well, look, there'll be talk of censuring people involved or asking them, you know, that they'll, you know, the idea is that they'll be removed from committees or lose their committee seats. And, you know, in some cases, the Jim Jordan's the big fish. And it's hard to tell what they have on him so far because he's sweating it. He's been on the news and he's been on Newsmax and he's been on Fox and all these, you know, shitting bricks on camera going, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I talked to him. I don't know. You know, like just totally out of character for how usually like brash and bullish he is when he's selling that narrative. In this one, he's like, I wasn't even, I mean, honestly, who can, I mean, do you remember who you called today? Like that kind of shit. And you're like, Motherfucker, you've looked at the call logs. It's your phone. Yeah. And if you used a burner and not your regular phone, they know that. They know that how long you were on with him. They've got his call logs. They know you bought that fucking phone. And they know, and if you use your burner phone to call somebody on a day like that, you remember the call. Yes. And yeah. and 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 the idea that he would forget that he called the president of the United States, especially on a day like that, or how often he talked to him is garbage. Cause I think, think of any like shocking moment you, you know, that you were involved in that. Like I, you know, you, you'll remember like if, if somebody asked you, you go, like, I think I called him twice that day. And then you'll think about it for days. And then months later, if people ask you, they'll go, yeah, I called him at like eight, eight, eight o'clock. I looked on my phone. Called him at eight o'clock in the morning. We talked yeah. for like 10 minutes. Then he texted me. Then I called him back. Whatever. Like he knows all that shit. Yes. So it's a total lie. Everything he's saying on there. And it's obvious and ham handed and stupid. Oh God, it is. So when he's on Newsmax and those shows going, I don't Maybe I did. Maybe I did. I you know, fuck you. It, yeah. Right. And even the MAGA folks don't buy it. I mean, they, they want to, but they don't. That's the, that's also the problem Trump is finding right now with a lot of his hoaxes. He's got a lot of true believers and to him, what a true believer is, is a person who will believe you even if they don't believe you because they believe in you. So I don't have to believe you. You can lie to me. I believe in you. I don't believe in what you're saying. What you're, I understand. You, you got to say whatever you got to say, baby. That's what they're talking about. Bridget Sweeney, how, what about Kevin McCarthy? Yes, it, Kevin's the same kind of situation. Um, he and Mark Meadows both responded to the subpoenas and all that kind of stuff. So they didn't get in trouble like Navarro did because they wrote letters. I mean, you can't arrest somebody if you don't like what they said. You know what I mean? Ultimately, it's interesting. The parallel everyone is using, and Tucker Carlson did this yesterday on his, you know, on a clip I did from his show, that he was saying, well, they didn't, you know, Eric Holder was found in contempt because he didn't give all the documents and they didn't go after him. They voted to hold him in contempt and then they referenced it to the DOJ. The difference was, was that Eric Holder responded all along the way, withheld certain stuff, for national security reasons because and for the workings of how the DOJ works with the president and did it under executive privilege, which Obama stated specifically while he was still president. And also Obama didn't try to destroy our democracy in the process. It was a it was fast and furious, which was unrelated to the election cycle or anything like that. It was a separate idea. So it's not like he was doing it to cover his own ass. He was doing it because it is executive privilege, whatever. Anyway, you, that's the genuine argument, just like Bush just and his conversations with his lawyers about uh, you know um, enhanced interrogation, all that shit, right? How oh, you're um, like Glenn Kirsten now. Everyone's asking you for answers. It's it's amazing. Carleen Martin, how how can Oz run an estate he doesn't live in? I had the same question, Carleen. Good question. Um, you'll have to ask Rand Paul. Apparently, the Republicans are all in on fucking carpetbaggers. They don't care. Because <laughs> here, uh, I'll tell you why. Um, he. Uh, he can have you know, all you need is a minor residence within the 150 days of the election itself. You what a load, of, what a load of horse shit. It's any, any office, any office yeah. in the country, like they have different rules in different places, but it's usually about 150 days. You have to have a, a steady address 
there. It doesn't have to even be your primary. You have to live in the district or the area or the state or whatever for that period of time. So if he has a guest house or a log cabin there up in Pennsylvania, he can get away with it. Um, the, the issue, though, is that you have to understand Republicans, the lesson they learned from Rand Paul was this is a chess match about, you know, if you've got a super red district and you've got a watery electorate that might not, you know, that might give a little ground, you find a super red candidate and put him in there like Rand Paul and you just move him there. You just relocate it. It's, it, you know, the same thing is true of sort of like Iowa politics. Iowa, the fix is in in Iowa from the, like the slacktivist and activist crowd on the right and the left. Because since Iowa goes first, and it always goes first, once that shit started, people moved in. People like there are round the clock people who live in Iowa that only work every two years in the ramp up to a midterm and the ramp up to a general. And that's their. I mean, they they moved to Iowa for electoral politics because that it just tipped up that way. It's just how it works. And the, and the Republicans decided a long time ago that they couldn't organically grow candidates from within a place because a lot of the places that they're going after are frankly stupid. They're um, low education, uh, you know, low, uh, low educated, poor white trash kind of areas. So they're not going to organically find somebody that's going to play ball and understand they're going to end up their fears with a populist redneck, which they don't want. So because that person might talk to you know, one of their Democratic allies and go, hey, man, I know you. And they're like, oh, shit, you need somebody who is aware of the chess game and plays it. You know, it's, it's the establishment trying to squeeze that. Now, both parties make this, but like the outsiders of both parties make this accusation. But the carpet bagging aspect of the Republican Party is now part of the methodology. Democrats just don't do that. You can say that people like they try to squeeze out one candidate in the district for another candidate because they're looking at the electability and the fundraising and shit and go, that person's got no fucking shot. They've got no shot. But they there's an insert. They get 20% more than, yes, 20% more. What was their count? They, they had five votes, and now they have eight. All right, all right. Tw- don't give me this t- fucking. <laughs> so How, like, the, your percentage jump ain't helping. Dr. Oz now is the Republican candidate going against the Democrat, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, who, um, and who do you think is going to win that one? Um, oh, Fetterman, the, De- the Democrat's going to win, although he's off the campaign trail until mid-July because he had a minor stroke scare and they were going to, they oh, gave okay. him a, uh, they're going to give him a pacemaker, um, which, you know, like you forget that over the years we've had lots of candidates, you know, near keel over and then get right back up and continue running. And quite frankly, the stress of doing this, the stress of running for office for anybody is, you know, it's it's going to give you gray streaks at the very least. And it's probably going to, if you've got any stuff that's about to shake loose physically, the stress is going to do it, which is why another reason, another reason why Trump is not going to run. Joni Heisenberg, uh, Nixon was told he didn't have the support of the Republicans in Congress and resigned. The Republicans are enabling Trump. Yeah, that's true. But um, at that point, the Republicans are the, you know, what would effectively be the establishment Republicans. That was the respectable wing that intended for the Republican Party to continue. So they had an idea that we want the Republican Party to survive. It can't survive with you, dude. Beat it. The, the Republicans that are in there now, besides there's the Mitch McConnell camp, and then there's the MTG Matt Gates crowd, the Freedom Caucus Gomert crowd. And their belief is, is that the Republican Party only exists with Trump. There was no group like that in the Republicans during Nixon. There were two groups that were like, he should say it's not that big a deal. He could ride it out. We're okay. But we definitely need somebody new. Like he doesn't have to step down, but he can't run again. And he's just kind of, kind of, after his presidency, he has to go off into the woods and paint. Um, and then their other ones were like, nah, he needs to go to jail. And so between the two of them, it, you know, they basically said, look, neither one of us like you, but the half of us are pretty close to recommending you go to jail. And so he left. So are, are you going to be broadcasting during the um, 
No, I'll be live tweeting some of it for sure. Um, and uh, what channel is it going to be on tomorrow? I don't, I don't even know that. C-SPAN. I mean, I, I mean, you can always watch it on C-SPAN, but I think like uh, MSNBC is carrying it live. Um, so yeah, all the, all the, uh, everybody but Fox, <laughs> basically. Yeah, well, well, that and that, and that leads me to my next question. And like my friend Greg Oliar has tweeted, if Fox News doesn't air this, why are they allowed to be in the White House asking questions? I mean, why are they allowed to be considered a news network when they're not reporting on the news? Um, because uh, we have freedom of speech and freedom of the press in the country, and they can print whatever they want to print and not print whatever they want to print. And if they have access because they're they've got a big enough audience, they're going to get somebody in the press corps. Um, and and Democrats have nothing to fear from the questions they ask. So who gives a shit? <laughs> Yeah, but I know. I guess it's because yeah. you know. Uh, but again, it's a Democrat. I'll be and, and uh, yeah. Midas, by the way, yeah. Somebody mentioned in the chat. Uh, Crystal said that Midas Touch is carrying it live. I'm yeah. gonna hop on with them after it's over for like a a post show for okay. a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'll dive okay. in with them and just to say that I'm. I've been giving them, you know, a little bit of tech support on the side. So hopefully it'll. Oh really? It'll work tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they even ask you for tech support. Mm-hmm. How does that happen, Hal? Because the word gets around. <laughs> as uh, as my mother always said, make yourself useful as well as ornamental. <laughs> it's so funny. Because mm -hmm. I, I would have thought that the Midas Touch Brothers have all that in order. But but they call on Hal, too. Well, there's a, you know, they do their regular podcast. And there's a never, another level up if you're live streaming you know, the audio and video of a site that, and they're getting a pure feed. They're not doing, they're not just doing what I do, which is like, put it and, you know, take it from somebody else and put it in a window. They're getting a live feed from the, you know, from the room. So, yeah. yeah. So are you familiar with the, um, gubernatorial I'll teach, race sorry, in Andrea says, how teach them how to do stars. I will. Absolutely. Um, I will, I will teach the Midas touch brothers how to do stars. You taught me, and I'm and I'm actually getting paid from it. Thank there you. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, Hal, uh, um, are you familiar mm -hmm. with any of the gubernatorial uh, candidates in Florida? Um, just the like, uh, what's her name, Nikki? Uh, Freed, it's Nikki who's Freed against Charlie Crist. Yeah. Well, you know, Charlie Crist is. I mean, he's a perennial. Um, I think Nikki's gonna take it. I hope so. Yeah. Because she's young, she's smart, she's energetic. Mm -hmm. And and I think she I think she would beat uh, mm -hmm. uh DeSantis because she got she has the youth vote. Yes. You know, like a lot of young people dig her, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I and well, there's not a lot of young people in the state. Um, you know, but yeah, DeSant DeSantis has an issue. Everybody knows he's gonna run. Um, for, you know, for president in 2024, everybody knows it. So the, in the Florida, um, in, in Florida, the, uh, the, the constituents know it, like even his constituents. So the idea that he's going to run again, take the governorship for nine months and then step down so he can run for president, you know, like that, it stinks. So I think a lot of the, whoever's running against him has a very strong chance and the pendulum swing isn't bad. So I was talking to, at the, at the jam last night, one of the people backstage, there was a, uh, there was a Prince impersonator who did one of the songs last night because they were doing a tribute to Prince uh, on his birthday. And one of the people who performed was this dude who actually performs as him. And they get, he, for whatever reason, he got his, the whole, one of the whole dressing rooms. There's only two of them up there for everybody. And the jam is like dozens of people, but he got this whole side room with benches and everything to himself, I guess, to get dressed and draped or whatever. And, um, so we we're all crammed into this other one, which was better for social conversation, certainly. And one of the girls that was sitting up, this girl had come in and she had broken her foot. So she was, she needed help getting up the steps and da da da. So she's sitting in the room. She's not moving around a lot. So I was just kind of chit chatting while we were waiting to go on. And she's from Florida. She just got back and we were talking about, you know, you know, masking and all that kind of stuff when they're doing. And 
she told me that it, about something which I had to look up afterwards because I found it shocking that DeSantis passed this rule once Miami passed a rule that you have that the employees of a company have to tell people to put their mask on that they have to do it mm -hmm. and and you know and they're the person the employers. yeah no the employees have to tell the customers oh okay they, I mean they got to put signs up but everybody who are there if you work at the place you have to tell people put your mask on it's your job here okay then uh it like it DeSantis passed a rule that individuals would get fined fifteen thousand dollars the employees if they didn't follow that rule which is contrary it seems to what he yeah. was saying about being anti-mask and being yeah, open I, yeah but on top of that the uh, there was no company recourse it wasn't if the company didn't tell their employee that they had to do it and the employee didn't know and they didn't tell somebody to put their mask on and somebody reported them you could sue or you could charge that that employee fifteen thousand dollars they'd be fined fifteen thousand dollars and the company would not be on the hook for it so they had like no no risk or responsibility it was all on the employees so basically every employee in miami-dade um would get fined 15 grand and then they couldn't go, but my boss never told me I had to tell him it. Like, sorry, it's on you. You pay that. Individuals. So he basically, this whole thing, like, we were the freest ever. All our restaurants were open. Meanwhile, he was basically holding a $15,000 fine gun to the head of everybody who worked everywhere, from convenience stores and restaurants and all that shit, what making a them... Hypocrite. Well, it's not even a hypocrite. He's hiding the fact that he was actually having a lockdown, effectively from the public essentially by making this uh, turning these folks into foot soldiers for the lockdown while pretending the state is open. It was a lie. It was all a lie. I mean, beyond the fact that he was like, you know, he was denying the numbers and all that kind of shit. Um, and, and, you know, the number of old people in that state, like, you know, it's going to spike and there's no shame in it spiking because of the, the contagion of it. Carlene Martin, how did, do, how does DeSantis pass laws against companies isn't that against the constitution how no that's it's zoning each city and you know these could be state uh, co companies that are only in the state they're franchised within the state they have they incorporate within the state the state has certain oversight under them especially under like osha rules and so he can jack osha rules up until they kick him out of office you could say like the no smoking ban in hotels for example the the if you pass that law because of OSHA because of secondhand smoke, the governor of any state with that could technically fine any smoker a half a million dollars for every butt they find laying around, and they the person would have would have no recourse. The only thing that could stop it is another governor takes their place, and they never get elected again because they did something that extreme and stupid. They jump the shark, as it were. But that that next governor could come and go, oh, yeah, you're right. That's terrible. It's only $40,000. Like, they still have the right to do it under those zoning rules, under the franchise rules, under the or the um, incorporation rules of the state. Well, it's how? the same. It's, by the way, it's the same reason why all the stuff about they violated the Georgia Constitution and the U.S. Constitution when they put out drop boxes and they let people, they changed the dates on stuff and they didn't have signature verification because you'd have to bring another person into a house during a pandemic, which is insane. Um, but, you know, they, they could call people and check them and find other ways to verify signatures if anything was hinky, but everything was good. Uh, all those things that happened and they're like, these are fraudulent votes that should not be counted because they did not cross every uh, T and dot every I by the rule. Well, they're under the Emergency Powers Act of every state and of the federal government. So if there's a declared emergency in the state or in the federal government, the rules shift. They're not the same regular rules. You wouldn't have the same rules during a flood you know, the analogy I use, you got a hurricane that happens the day before the election and it's going to go for three days. And like, oh, shit, people vote in person around here. What the fuck are we going to do? We, all the votes have to be counted by midnight on Tuesday. Or we got to, you know, they got to be presented by, well, we got to set up a system immediately. So the governor, governor can go, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to send out, you know, drones to fly over areas. People walk out, throw your ballot in the basket and it'll fly back and whatever. 
because you shouldn't go outside because there's a frigging hurricane, right? Yeah. Um, so he, if you had to call in the entire state legislature to vote on the drone plan to try and solve that, A, you couldn't because there's a hurricane happening. And some of those legislators might die in the hurricane. So long time ago, in every single one of these states, all of them passed a law that said, hey, what happens if there's a hurricane while we're doing the election? We got to have something to do. All right, we'll have these contingency plans. You know, these are in case of emergency break glass. But also the governor can, you know, act in his or her best judgment and create a plan if they can't, they don't have to call everybody back in to do this. And you're getting love from my mother, Hal. Ah, <laughs> Osa, Osa. Yep. Osa Melinda. Thank you, Osa. Yep. Thank you so much. Big hug. Hal, well, as you know, I, I got to go to my beer on the balcony. I know, I got to go. And you have to go. So plug everything you want, including Frank. Frank.com. Um, yeah, just go there. Ever, you know, most of my chat, you know, uh, knows you know my other stuff or whatever. But infotainmentwars.com. And if you're on YouTube or Twitch, uh, you can also go to my Facebook page, the House Sparks page. Um, I think it's at the House Sparks page. Actually, brings you there. Um, and you know, and and follow there as well or whatever. I might as well jack my numbers everywhere. But the the goal is is that, you know, is subscriptions on my YouTube page, getting those numbers up and and subscriptions on my Twitch. So I'm trying to, it's oh. always a, yeah. Do you know what I wanted to tell you? Hmm. Because no. you coached me and and you read with me for that audition I did for, yeah. for the Michael J. Fox. I never told you that I got a call back for that. See? And the only, see, but the thing is, before I got the call back, I shaved. And the guy who I was playing had appeared and then I, I don't think I got it just because of that fucking dumb reason. Well, tell yourself that. Um, <laughs> no, actually the callback, which was the oddest thing, Hal, and then I'll let you mm -hmm. go, but it was to do, do the lines while listening to myself, do the lines, but talking without any sound. So as if, you know, which was so weird to me because like, and as if, they wanted to have uh, Michael J. Fox doing the line, and they wanted me just to be, you know, lip just syncing kind of, it. But how would I know what you know? I, you know, wouldn't oh, I just? It was no. kind of, It was so fucking weird. Maybe, maybe he's impersonating these voices, and that's part of the story. Yeah, I know he does because he does. Oh, did you see? Um, that's what it was. Did, you saw Ant Man, right? Uh, no. Go see, go go watch Ant Man. They they do a great thing where uh, Michael Pena is telling a story, and he's like talking about the, you know like he met this dude and she's running down the street. And he's all like, "Hey, I know who you are," and 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 they cut to other actors and they're all saying those lines. Yes, with his voice speaking, and but they act it out kind of like him, even when it's inappropriate to who they are. Like there's this like super smart scientist, and he's like, "Hey, I like totally brilliant, right?" And you know, <laughs> yes. and and they see they show this person like at MIT going, "Hey, I'm like but, really brilliant, right?" That's what that is. I guarantee that's what they're doing. But I brought I, like, it up just to uh, because I have another audition coming up for a off Broadway touring show of of a Broadway musical. You know, you know, it's like the like it's a company tour. You know, we sure. Have, so wish me luck. I might have you read with me again. <laughs> well, are, are you, will you be singing as well? I might. It's for, uh, it's for Tootsie. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I played the sin. I played the Sydney Pollock part. Although see now I don't know if I should shave the beard or not. <laughs> I don't think it doesn't matter in theater. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> People are very, yeah. Theater is a lot more flexible. Uh, they'll, you know, they'll, you'll look the look when you do the job. Nobody gives a shit until that moment. It's only, it's, and film people don't care either. TV and streaming people do. You have to look the part because it's start, it's next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. But movies, they're like, oh, okay, we're thinking about this and it starts in, you know, in three months or six months and we're trying to gear up for who our ensemble is going to be only in those big roles. The smaller roles are happening immediately. So they're just, they want you to look the part. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I got locked into a look for so long because I would work based, you know, cause I just look like me. And then once I grow my hair out, um, that, the, that work dries up immediately. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. The TV stuff, but it's okay because I want it to. <laughs> Part of the reason what you know, the way you break typecasting is you is you don't look like yourself. Yeah. Make make the, an effort to go, that's him as much as possible because it's a it's I mean it's important for your mental well-being, I think, too, to not have to walk around, you know, wearing Woody Allen glasses all the time because that's your shtick. But yeah. it's it's also important to like you know, let them know you're not that character, you know, so yeah. they don't forget you're an actor. Yep. You know, that that's no, I important. Hear you. Mm-hmm. Hal, it's always great, man. I love you and thanks Pace, for coming on, man. I insist and I will uh we'll, we'll see you soon and we'll talk, I'm sure, in the near future about the the, yes. the craziest. The first night of this is gonna be like, you know, again, an Avengers Origins film. Like, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. There'll be a couple of cool pieces of video, a couple of sp- striking text messages that will make people tune in later. But the stuff that's really going to come out over the long form ones next week are going to be, I think, the like the stuff where people go, ooh. And then then that's the viral YouTube and uh, and social media clips that you'll start yeah. seeing. Yeah. All right, my brother. I will be see happy. you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, everybody. What a great show today with the, uh, uh, the uh, hosts of the Tony Michaels podcast, Tony Michaels and... Uh, Gabe Sanchez, and we also had Hal Sparks on, on this special edition of the Stuttering John podcast, the Wednesday show. Now I'm going straight to Beer on the Balcony. I got about 100 pictures from the Army Major, and we are going to go through his tour of Europe from my Beer on the Balcony, from my Patreon and YouTube members. Uh, Become a Patreon member at patreon.com slash stutteringjohn, or a YouTube member, because it's going to be fun. As the Army Major and I walk down his memory lane of Europe. This is Stuttering John saying 